<laughs> this episode of Fine Time is brought to you by the social contract that comes with subscribing to a podcast. That means whether you use iTunes or the Google Play Store or even Spotify. Spotify? Guys, you made that last one up. Whatever. You can listen to those assholes, Steve and Andre, talk about the Bayonetta 3. Now, can you guys please let me go? I don't think I deserve this kind of shabby treatment. Hello, party people. It's your boy, Dre. And I'm here with Steve. Yeah, how you doing, man? You're still in Enzo mode? I mean, come on. Snap out of it. Don't you tell me what to do and not to do. Oh, my God. You're out of control already. Don't make me call Rodan. All right. As the name implies, I don't know why I would say that, but it's silly because you clicked on this and you know what this is about. We're going to talk Bayonetta 3. And when we mean talk, we mean talk. We're going to say everything. So per usual in these post-game shows, full on spoilers. This is your warning right now. If you don't want to hear that, um, come back and listen to this when you have played Bayonetta 3. If you're going to continue along with us now, thank you for doing so. Also, I think Andre might say fuck at least once. I always say fuck. It's not a podcast unless I say it. Has there been a podcast where I didn't say fuck? Not, not in my recollection. As anyone knows who's listening to this, Bayonetta 3, boy, we have some good. We do have some good, but we have a lot of bad. Is that a, is that a good characterization? <sighs> yes, it sure fucking is. Where do you want to start in particular? Because... We have a lot to unravel. We have a lot here. Let's just start with, okay, what did you think of the game overall? Let's just like a a couple sentences. Like, did you like it? Did you not like it? Overall thoughts. I think that's the best way to frame these kinds of things. In the end, I liked the game, but then you got to have a big old bold face, but with a colon with everything we're about to talk about today. <laughs> all, all 57 things after it. <laughs> I'm not sure how much I liked this game. I'm not sure. Maybe I will know after it settles for a few months. But right now, I really don't know about this. I'm sorry to give such a wishy-washy answer, but I, I just don't. So let's start here, shall we? When they conceived this in 2017, or I guess before, I mean, we found out about it in 17. I'm sure the idea of like a multiverse was a lot more novel than it is in 2022. Uh, 47 Marvel movies later, I'm, it feels like Bayonetta 3 had their thunder stolen. I'm not sure they had too much thunder to begin with, but... Uh... Oh, boy because everyone not only was everyone doing uh multiverses and time travel and all kinds of this bullshit by then because why write something when you can write around it but it wasn't doing a lot of what we a lot of what we like bayonetta to do in the first place huh no not really it it doesn't allow us to sink into the well at least for me it doesn't allow me to sink into the character and characters the way I would like to if you're going to have something like this. Did you like uh, Rodan's line like, they'll get enough power to wipe out the whole trinity in a snap? A snap, Rodan? You mean like Thanos? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm I'm sure they were really, you know, they, they, they waited online all night in AMC Tokyo or wherever Platinum is and uh, they, they, you know, they're like this is going to be great. No one's ever going to get sick of this ever. <laughs> well, we're here. I think it is impossible to start talking about this game in earnest unless we talk about its performance and its fidelity in general. 
its competence in that field. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are like, who gives a shit what frame rate something runs at, who get, who blah, blah, blah. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now why this matters. And in particular, why this matters for Bayonetta. So let me lay this out here just to start. Frame rate is gameplay. People always say, oh, the gameplay or the graphics don't matter. The gameplay does. Frame rate is gameplay. Fluidity is gameplay. Consistency in visual integrity and stability is gameplay. It matters. If, if you're the type who says they can't tell, your hands will be able to tell. Have you ever played a game where, like, you whiffed an attack or a block or any timing element, but, like, you, you swore that you were on point? You swore that you did that? That's probably a frame rate thing a lot of the times, especially nowadays. You ever, you ever hear those crazy fighting game people talk about, like, frame perfect counters and all that bullshit that yet not that you have to get that precise with it but there's a reason why fighting games run 60 frames a second without fail it's absolutely critical to gameplay and as far as bayonetta goes i think it's absolutely critical as well steve and this game bayonetta 3 doesn't hit it now if we were talking about this on the main show i'd have this this is where i would normally give angel Angel, Andre, a good-natured rubbing for frame counting. Or I would start insisting, oh, you've got secret glasses. Or he's got an in with Digital Foundry. There's no <laughs> way you'd notice this shit on Bayonetta 3. Uh-huh. No, you, you're, you're kind of full of it, but no, no, no. Even I noticed this shit today. And if Steve noticed this shit today, there's a problem. I Look, I, and I'm still not entirely... I, I can't quantify what's wrong, but... There's things I noticed weren't quite right here. I'm 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 whiffing different attacks, and you know I've been wait waiting a good while for this game, like everyone else. So if I'm not inhaling the copium like everyone else, and I'm noticing the hiccuping it's even doing on TV mode, I, I'm noticing it. You're not going to trick the Andres of the world. <laughs> oh no! I mean, yeah, it's something I, I it's something I see, but like. This is just, I mean, again, you're always my litmus test. If you notice, then it sucks. So, you know, I I just don't remember any point in this game where it actually got the 60 frames a second. Even those big open areas, like the grass or whatever, before you go through a couple portals, like the beginning of the game, even that was like stuttery, like low 50s. There wasn't even anything going on. I don't know if there was. No, it couldn't. I I don't know if that was like a artistic thing it couldn't have been because we because <laughs> then we get to... <sighs> i'm sorry co- it's just that like artistically i'm gonna artistically be 47 frames a second annoyingly uh, they did those let, let's talk about the kaiju battles for a second how, how embarrassing were those i think there were Bad. like two two or three of them and i'm gonna put on my movie maker hat for a second because kaiju is like one of the trickiest things to do in cinema. You have to get that pace just right. If you do it too mm-hmm. fast or too slow, it looks hysterical and it doesn't look real. And oh my God, in Bayonetta 3, it is just embarrassing. We might as well, you might as well just be taking turns. It, it is ridiculously bad. <laughs> it's really bad. And whenever you have those big set pieces, whether it's the kaiju battles or remember early in the game where they're doing the Doctor Strange thing of like, oh, it's being all kaleidoscope and these buildings are building this way. Isn't that crazy? Oh, my God. And you're <laughs> sliding down it on your crab or whatever that is or your dragon. I forget what creature it is. Those are like locked at 30. Like they didn't even try. And I, when I say locked, that's not actually it. The frame pacing sucks so bad that it's just like. It feels really stuttery. Like they didn't even try on the sequences. I don't know, man. What what was that? What was any of that? Uh, they weren't. You need the fluidity if you're going to have action that fast and zipping through this and that. You really need it. Like and especially uh, speaking of fluidity, cutscenes appear to target 30 frames a second, which is fine. But it feels like they often run below that too, making like those fast action cutscenes incomprehensible sometimes especially again some near the beginning where they're doing this really fast like quick cuts it's like what the hell is going on did you feel that way too because it was like 
this is running it, real choppy it, right now. It, yeah, like I said, I thought they were like doing some kind of weird artistic cinema choice here, but then I'm like, no, this is what we're in for, huh? <laughs> Yeah, look, and uh, look, I'm a reasonable person. Yes, I'm a frame rate whore, but I understand it's a Nintendo Switch. Like, Shin Megami Tensei 5 is 30, and uh, again, often below that. The game has performance issues, but they weren't trying to do this type of action either. Bayonetta cannot get away with this. Like, the very concept of what Bayonetta is demands it be up to spec. And I know it's only been a few minutes into this podcast, but... I can't believe we made it this long without talking about how fucking terrible those smoke barriers look. There's like misty smoke t- directing where you can or cannot go oftentimes in this game. And they are so it might be the most lowest res asset I've ever seen on Switch. Honestly, I hate the smoke barriers. <laughs> I hate them so fucking much. <laughs> <laughs> and not just they, not only do they get away in level exploration, which was something one and two had, because the minute you step into them up, oh, you got they they just throw you back a few hundred feet. Yeah, it, it, they look terrible. And, and I and I remember this point in particular because I remember when Star Fox Zero was being shown off, which was another platinum game, and when everyone was in its at most fed up with the Wii U at this point. Mm-hmm. There were a handful of people that are like, these are N64 textures. <laughs> and even though they <laughs> clearly haven't looked at that game in years, but here, this became almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, you want you want some N64 textures? We'll give them to you. And it then, looks so bad. Who? Why else would you put your step? Yep, this is Void Smoke. Go ahead. It- it reeks of the Final Fantasy 15 problem of like they had all the time in the world and it was still not done. Like, you know how like the last third of Final Fantasy 15 just completely turns into schlock like a complete Nomura game. It sure fucking did. Like, that's what it feels like here. It feels like they didn't have time to optimize this at all. And this is proven by there was a gameplay trailer from June. I think it was like maybe the release date reveal trailer or whatever, but they're showing footage, cutscenes, and gameplay. This shit looks crazy compared to the game that we actually got. It's the even the cutscenes are 60, and it's like 1080p easily. This looks like John Linneman of Digital Foundry tweeted it best. He said th- this old trailer looks like an HD remaster. Of the game that we actually got. I I think I know it was even harder to look back at it after the fact, but I think even the debut trailer we got a year ago looked better than a lot of what we got here somehow. What happened? I mean, obviously, that's an impossible question to answer. But like, did they was that like a PC build and then they just dumped it on switch and then they didn't have time to bring it up to spot? Like what what went on there? Did someone at Platinum be like, okay, Babylon's Fall is going down the tubes. We better get this Bayonetta 3 out like this year. We've been dicking around too much. I don't know why either. Be, why why it's this bad either, because there was a lot of complaints about, you know, a, a lot of people m- more copium huffing going, oh, the Switch was never going to be able to handle this. Platinum's gone too far, blah, blah, blah. Guys, Platinum's got a lot of shit on the on the Switch already. They they ported the first two, Wonderful 101, and then they did the whole, a whole ass new IP in Astral Chain. They, <laughs> sure know what the, they know what the Switch can do. And at, this, and at this point in the Switch's lifespan, this was the time where a company like Platinum should be able to recognize the limitations and, and push those, not whatever we got here. <laughs> just it's just it's so disappointing and ultimately the reason why we're talking so much about performance and why it matters is like i hated the 360 ps3 era for how often they pushed games beyond the fidelity and like that was capable on those systems so everything ran like shit in that era like they often targeted 30 like things didn't usually get there sometimes so like, and I really resented it. it. I I couldn't stand it. And Bayonetta was such a fresh breath of air at that time because 
here's a Japanese developer, and at that time was Scarus, right? And like we're doing a Devil May Cry like a new company, 60 frames a second on 360. Don't play the PS3 game, it's awful. And like they're really doing the best they can with the fast action that it needs. A switch is a lot more powerful than a 360. So like, don't tell me shit's not possible. If you want that, if you want that performance, you can get it. They didn't do it here for whatever reason. Astral Chain was 30 frames a second, Steve. 30. Like, and that's fine. You they built the game around that. They didn't try to do Bayonetta. You know what I mean? So yeah, what you said is correct. Don't don't tell us that they don't know what they're doing with this hardware. They do. Um, one more thing, one technical issue that bothered both of us a lot. And I'm glad it bothered you, too, because usually this is not something I complain about in any game. This is not something I do. But the camera is so poor in this game. It's awful. How many times did you, Steve, did you play a boss, like especially that centipede boss, and it just gets stuck right inside him? And like, you know what I mean? You're trying to fight. It's awful. And then the performance sucks on top of that. And it's just like everything compounds to make this like just terrible in these action games i can usually negotiate with the camera just because i'm more focused on what buttons to press but here's the other thing i i usually like to pick up that relic that where you deflect attacks by tapping the stick in that direction me too and in this particular particular case in addition to uh you know frames not being quite where they should be you got somebody just spinning the camera around at random like oh i guess i'm not smacking that back today well like remember back in the day when they'd have the big bosses in the first two they'd have these big wide shots and arenas you know what i mean to fight these big monstrosities on so you don't so that doesn't happen to you now you're fighting these huge guys in these little rooms even again though that's still not an excuse because like you should still have a better camera than that in 2022 but like, you know, when you don't have time to optimize, even though you had five years. So we keep dancing around this a bit. I think we should talk a little bit about what we think, or at least what I think, on how they got here in particular. Got where? Like to just this, how this ended up the way it did? Yes. Okay. Tell me your theory. I think, well, it, it only really occurred to me after... Someone, a game, a game informer, Emran Khan, indicated that there was an earlier build of the game that was going to be more open world in scope. Oh, boy. Something more like Astral Train than where we ended up, where you, where these levels were going to be hubs and whatever. And it makes a lot of sense when we get further along, but I would think. They are sort of treated kind of hub, hub-ish, right? Especially that, like, initial grass world, like, it's kind of hubbish. I see. I can see remnants of that. But okay, let's say they spent how long? Like maybe three years trying to do this semi-open world thing before they said, "Oh fuck it, let's just make a bayonetta game." I, I mean, there is a way to do this, but I don't think they were able to quite get it. Like, I, I think they might have started off with uh, wherever we ended up at the end as a base, and then we choose where we go to and to different those different bigger worlds is uh, not necessarily connected to each other you know the different worlds they they wouldn't have been you know especially impressive but i think it, it could have worked if it if they pulled it off maybe but part of the appeal for me for bayonetta is that you don't have to worry about that shit yeah you can do a little light adventuring in the first couple i'll oh, find this item find that item and and three still has that as well but like at some point i kind of just want to it's the Devil May Cry thing. I kind of just want to go to the place I'm supposed to go. That's it. For me, anyway. I mean, I like poking around these levels here, but the levels here are just big empty spaces in three, and they're not really filled with anything exciting to find other than the void smoke that we went over before. <laughs> and, you know, there's the... You know, th that really would make it worth it. You know, now there's three kinds of umbran animals for us to find. Wow. I mean, instead of just the crows, and they're all a pain in the ass. To, I think I managed to find all three of them in like the first three levels. And then after that, the architecture became bullshit with void smoke and whatever else. So I just gave up on trying to, on, on trying to find those. 
I don't think I got a single crow, honestly. I just didn't care this time. I, I, I stopped caring for a bit after a while, too. I mean, and now they just stuck angels in there on occasion just to be, you know, oh, remember them? Now you can get them for bonus money. <laughs> you, you know what sucks even in this game is the, um, what do you call them? Like the bonus, like the the portals you can go in and do like a little challenge kill these guys in 60 seconds or something i used to love those in the first two and these are just annoying i hate them now man i did a whole bunch of them and i still like gave them all like one chance but there were those ones where they just blow wind up your ass and they're like Uh okay go deal with that i'm like no (laughs) yeah no thank you once i got one of the wind ones it's like i don't know what you want me to do here game I think I figured it out one of them with the club. And then after that, I'm like, no, we're not doing this more than once. (laughs) Just every decision. It just feels not in the best interest of the game. I don't know. I I think they knew what they were doing when they told us to go find figurines that have boxes that look suspiciously like the off market condoms you can find in certain New York sex shops. (laughs) They do. I didn't realize they look like condoms and you pointed out to me, but yeah, they have the, yeah. Yeah. Just buying a Trojan at a, you know, 7-Eleven or something. Uh, All right. So this game, just as a concept and like gameplay flow, shall we say, to put a broader term on it, is it feels like things are too big, but then also sometimes not big enough, maybe at the same time. So I'll explain what I mean. The reason why Bayonetta works or worked before is because they balance those like meat and potatoes battles, you know, dodge here, which time there, uh, shoot, shoot, uh, you know, punch, punch, kick, whatever, wicked weave. You know, you have all that stuff going on. You're you're there's crowd management. You're doing a lot of stuff, you know, that one against many melee combat, which is key. And it really lets you sink yourself into the combat and the mechanics and really learn it. And then you match that with like huge bosses, spectacle bosses, and then like occasional regular enemies that are large. But Bayonetta 3, like they start you out with, on that boat with like a few regular enemies, and then everything just gets huge. Steve, like they just start throwing these really big enemies at you like all of a sudden. And it's just like, okay, we're doing that already. But then it's just like, over and over. Did you notice this while you were playing? It's just like, what happened to like a couple small fry I could just beat up on? Like, everybody's huge. Yeah, I don't know what that. I mean, they were obviously building up to something else I'm going to talk about and we're going to talk about in a second. But in that beginning, they give you a lot of big things to just smack around right away and not a whole lot of, uh, I don't want to call them putty men, but I guess that's what they really are in this game from the the from power rangers i mean, i know that's a bit that's after your time but no i know what a, i know what a, are you talking about like the meat and potatoes like guys wearing a little mask <laughs> i'm gonna and it, then they explode there's, when not you kick lot, them. There's, there's, there's not a lot of that here and that that explode into goo <laughs> yeah yeah and i lo- like that was that's the point of bayonetta it makes like the big bosses worth it but then the reason why i say also not big enough is that bayonetta 3 doesn't have those remember they used to have chapters dedicated to just the boss and you fight this big thing for like 20 minutes yeah and like this game doesn't have that not that you have to do exactly what you did before it's just that like come on like there's no balance here it's just like okay here's every monstrosity enemy that you have to like punch and kick for like forever and and like you don't get the big bosses to pay off and then you don't get like the small fry to beat up on it just feels very like eh. the balance feels off your whole game can't be spectacle i guess is a is a better way to put it and i think they wanted to really try though with spectacle because if we, if we look at the weapon system oh boy you might remember before we would get to assign a thing to our arms, a thing to our legs and, you know, go to town. Yeah. Here we got to use a, a weapon demon pair, non-negotiable. We're going to get to how demon slave makes many of the lower fights way too fucking easy. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think going back to the whole, this was going to be some sort of open world, whatever business. I think it, 
they were making a lot of these with mobility and exploration in mind. Like they, the, the club they give you turns you into some sort of beastman and that lets you jump all over the place. Then there's a spider gun where you get to be swing around on a grappling hook. And then there's my favorite weapon, the train saw, which shoots oh, out God. buzz saws and f- f- makes you fling around on a fucking train. And that was, I stupid. guarantee huh? that was stupid. Oh, come on. It was fun. I didn't but, like it, <laughs> but, but I guarantee they were looking at all this shit in development and going, this is going to be great stuff. We can make the player, you know, explore all these worlds with that. Then they had to tone those down when Bayonetta three became Bayonetta three. Even the clock tower was totally that you get towards the end of the game was probably going to be some kind of hub point thing because like, why else would that be there? Yeah. Like time is kind of frozen, right? When you go to big apple 3 AM, sorry, I can't do the voice, but, uh, (laughs) (laughs) but like you said you mentioned the demon slaves and why it trivializes like a lot of the combat is because it feels like what i was saying before about there's so many large enemies and it feels like every battle is going to take forever because you're whomping on them so much because they're huge and they have huge life bars. So they came up with this thing where you can call those demons out at any time and have them whomp on the big guys for you. But then that also trivializes a small fry because you could just like your, your dragon could just tail swipe them once and then they're dead. And then like, you're just, it feels like you're just whomping on the guys to get enough magic meter again, to call out the, other guy so you can do big damage with that instead of the little piddly shit damage. It just doesn't feel great to play that way. And and I know I keep flipping back to this, but I'm sure in this hypothetical open world Bayonetta 3, there were lots and lots of little skirmishes where it would have been good to just call in a big de- big ass demon and have him clear him out in just a few seconds. But, you know, in the final format, I still feel like they were very close to making this sort of thing work, but it doesn't make it. Like, there's, you know, the the consideration. You, If you're in a narrow corridor, you can't call in a demon. To me, that's like, hey, you guys are thinking about this a little bit. That's great. But I try to do a lot of... Uh, I, I try to do a lot of the fights without them, just, just because. And then, but as you said a lot of these guys have way too big a health bar to hit in the first place. And then even if that were the case, some of them have end up sticking barriers that you need some kind of demon Ren to tear through in the first place anyway. Yep. And it becomes mandated. There had to like, even if there, it was like on the string of some basic bitch combo you were doing, like the demon weaves and the other two games, I think that could have been uh easier easier way than the press L to win button that we solution we got. But Oh, my God. It's just like it's just it really diminishes Bayonetta herself as a badass because you're just punching these guys forever. and They're not dying. You need to use those other guys. Whereas instead of before, it's like a cool finishing move where you do like a very light QTE. Now it's just like you have to like do it to kill anybody. It just sucks, honestly. And like it goes further into what I didn't like about Bayonetta 2. And I love Bayonetta 2, by the way. I'm not shitting on that at all. It's just that like it, but it did dumb down the mechanics a bit. And like the combo stuff versus the first one is like this very strict. You got to do this and that and the other being added to open it up a little bit more, but like at the expense of like making it feel a little more, not button mashy. That doesn't, that's not correct, but just a little more beat em up. instead of like deliberate moves you're doing at a deliberate time. Which is fine. It gives the game a different feel. But Bayonetta 3 dumbs that down way further. Notice we haven't talked about the just general punching and kicking because why? Also, you like how when you do your like punch, punch, punch combo, you do all the fists. That slows the game way down. It turns into oh Chop City. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> no, it's terrible. Like, I didn't even like to do that move anymore because it looks so bad. <sighs> but... Like I said, enemies are less interesting to fight because they're so one note and we've been over it. But honestly, despite that, what Bayonetta 3 does, it makes Bayonetta 2 feel like fucking Guilty Gear in comparison <laughs> with the way like, so I'll never complain about Bayonetta 2 again. Jesus Christ. I, by the way, 
you pretty much can't die during those set pieces. It seems like you have like health for days, even if you get hit by like, you know, the one where you're doing fake Panzer Dragoon, you're flying to the cave at like a, that shitty frame rate. Even if you bump into like every rock, you'll you'll just win. It doesn't matter. I don't know how much you tried, but like it doesn't matter if you try or not. You'll just get through it. Yeah. Well, there was no, I thought it was more of a boss than a set piece. But yeah, another thing that was more. Yeah, just do this was pretty much. Yeah, just. Just wait for this shit. You can shoot things if you want, but, we, we, you know, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, why bother? It's like, I mean, I'm not saying it's like totally Sonic Forces where you just set the controller down and win, but, like, honestly, sometimes it kind of felt like it. I did I did like the one with the, the, the Cyber Doctor where you're doing the Final Fantasy VII remake a motorcycle with Jean. I guess that one was okay. I lost to that more than I would care to admit. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll admit to this before we take a break. I got to ask you, as a New Yorker, are you related to Enzo or anyone like him? I have to know the truth. <sighs> Enzo is New York's brother and its spirit animal. And any New Yorker will claim Enzo and protect him at all costs. He is the best filthy Guido New York representation we've I've ever seen from a Japanese video game. No notes. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We are back and we would be remiss if we didn't start this section of this podcast by talking about uh, Jean spy action, a.k.a. elevator action featuring Jean. Hey, and you know what? They've, they've done the retro homage before. We had a whole Space Harrier section in the first game and a Star Fox section in the second. Yeah. They, they were these they were they were, you know, the segments we didn't know we wanted until we got them. Welcome to my fantasy zone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> so, you know, I was pretty excited at first when we were going for a different approach with elevator action. Yes, it's elevator action, not Metroid, you silly children. I cannot believe people said that online. I know there's fetuses a, online, but like, come on, man. It, it, it is it is a game where you go up and down elevators and go through doors to get things you need before moving on to the next level. This is elevator action it, available in several different forms on the same console Bayonetta 3 is on. I, I'm, I'm doing the I'm doing the gamer equivalent of read a fucking book here. <laughs> <laughs> Play elevator action. Yeah. So I was excited for all this until I tried playing it. On the TV, everything is way zoomed out, so it made it way too tough to see what labs you can actually duck into, since everything's a nondescript gray color without great markings. At least, that, I don't know if that's how you saw it. But then I, I got—I didn't sorry. have any visibility problems. No, of course you didn't. Everyone's bad. Everyone's great at seeing shit, but me. Hey, my eyesight's terrible. <laughs> like, but, but 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 imagine how I felt again when. I, after I cleared the game, to be rewarded with a bonus game in the shop. It, there was a 16-bit console and cartridge attached to it, so I thought they were using their, uh, you know, their time from Soul Cresto to make, you know, John's elevator action for us to play on as, as a fun little bonus here. No, they smudged Vaseline on the lens and call, on the real levels and called that... You know, a retro version. What the hell kind of shit indie level <laughs> shit is that? It was bad. I did, as soon as I saw what it was, I kind of just quit. I was like, no, I, I ain't playing this. No, I noped right out of that. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, I like the elevator action stuff, though, probably more than you. I, I thought I don't know. I thought those were those were fun. I don't know. Maybe. I had to play those portably after the first one because I could not see anything going on. I I really didn't have a, I played the first one portably because I just happened to do it at work. But like, no, I didn't have any problem with the TV. Did you like the crappy Terminator 2 reference after you kill the boss, like the thumbs up through the lava? <laughs> like the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like their fake credits too, with like the every when you after you beat her elevator actions featuring Jean, <laughs> Doctor Sigur, <laughs> Executive Director Jean, <laughs> Key Grips Jean. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I I liked it. No, it's not Space Harrier or Star Fox, but honestly, I I don't know. It was fine. Uh, Andre, yes, I'm sorry. Are you? I I am in my own way. I am sorry because there was a story here, and I know I said in the chat that these are usually th- the story just usually acts as bookends to what's really going on in the game, which is the fun gameplay. But there's just too much shit for us to ignore all of it. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk about the story. We, we, in this game. we can't go blow by blow because that's lunacy, but. We we can't walk by the elephant on coke in the room. Yeah, yeah we got to we got to talk about it somewhat. Unfortunately, oh, my God, an elephant would be so efficient at snorting cocaine with that fucking snout. Imagine that shit just just. Yeah, but and you definitely don't want to be in the room when it's done unless you do. In which case. <laughs> unless you're just that kind of person. <laughs> um, So the game starts and Bayonet is dead. Roll the credits. She's dead, except she actually dies at the end. Oh, my God. But uh, (laughs) oh, my God. But um, that was weird. Did you expect? Okay, from that, did you actually think that was foreshadowing or like, no, Mm, it could have been. I think it could have went either way at that point. So you didn't have an inkling. Uh, It was a bit heavy handed at the beginning, the way they just, you you, you know, uh, uh, on uh, different shows where uh, kids in a high school or whatever are putting on a play and they tell them to act better and then they go and, and they and they're clearly like going, oh yeah. that, 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 that was the opening bayonetta death scene to me yep it was weird it was it was kind of <laughs> it was a bit much <laughs> do you oh do you think okay do you remember that initial 2017 game game awards trailer where she does sort of shatter and her thing and her like sort of brooch a shatter too that is what happens in the game they told us that back then yeah so you know that they did make good on that um okay i guess this is the time to talk about viola our second heroine yeah she uses Dimensional magic to hop to Bayonetta three land. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. She goes uh, to Bayonetta three land. And, Goodbye. And she, she, she's like, it's like, okay. She gives a laundry list of demands of what needs to happen to Bayonetta three and, and including, <laughs> and, and then the elevator and also the elevator action search force for Dr. Sigurd, which, you know, doesn't turn out badly at all, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Cyber Doctor was evil. How, how about that? Do you like how they you you like you, you meet him like the previous chapter and then immediately it's like, hey, 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 after you do like clouds motorcycle chase? He, well, I, I had an inkling they were going to do something with that after I saw him in the same pile of goo that everyone else has been bleeding over the course of the course of the game. I'm like. Well, this clearly isn't lime jello, so. <laughs> How did you feel about that, actually, come to think of it? Like, that the fact that they're just sort of, like, aliens? I mean, there were still angels and demons. And I did think that was, like, an interesting motif. Maybe they just didn't want to do that again. But the fact that they were just kind of, like, like you said, putty men. I just. Man, I guess they really were aliens, even though they kept saying they're technically from the Earth or whatever. They're, they they're never, aliens. Yeah, they're they don't aliens. really explain any of this very well at all. They're aliens. But I don't know. The The first few chapters are like really madcap insanity too much. There's no room to breathe. Like the first two games used to make these moments feel a bit more earned, right? That, Like I said tit for tat, choose your combos carefully, blah, 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 the combat, but not just that. 
you know, you'd start out on the clock tower in Bayonetta. It's fallen down and these crazy shit is happening. But then you sink right into that graveyard. And so the whole bit's happening. Then you have a more normal, quote unquote, experience after that intro. Again, I'm not saying Bayonetta, Bayonetta 3 needs to do the exact same shit the first two games did. At the same time, this just came off really bad. Every Everything's big and feels too big. And now it runs like shit on top of it. I just... Uh, well, it's it's well not awfully weird metaverse story because they're all weird in their own way. But we have to meet and watch the inevitable deaths of many bayonettas, including the wonderful one hundred and one bayonetta, Dynasty Warriors bayonetta, Prince of Persia <laughs> bayonetta, and and Lupin the Three bayonetta, and her mum. And we <laughs> take their weapon, and we take their weapons along the way, like some sort of witch Mega Man. Even though we don't kill them at all, it's like. Now I have your power. <laughs> and we take their <laughs> demons, too, for some reason. Yeah, it's like, I know your world's about to collapse in itself, but I guess I'll take the demon with me. <laughs> <laughs> I did like Dynasty Warriors Bayonetta. That, that was great. Uh, and that's the problem. Like, you get these all these backdrops for it that I wish looked a little better than they did. <laughs> the mom part, like, okay, if you never played the first game, that shit doesn't make any sense at all to you why why would she be fighting her mom why would she be seeing the image you know what i mean like it makes sense if you played them but like they didn't really set that up it just kind of happens well two gave closure on her dad so i guess they here they figured they needed to give closure on her mom <laughs> you you mean her dad you mean david bowie yes i, I that's exactly who i mean and you knew <laughs> that's who i'm no, i'm just kidding <laughs> It is. It's fucking David Bowie, man. Yeah, it was fucking David Bowie. <laughs> um, but which isn't to say we do we get a bunch of levels with Viola too, right? And I thought she was a f- interesting character, but and they make her play differently than her too. It's not like okay, here's Viola. It's Bianetta, but she has shorter hair and she plays the same. But what I don't like is how she activates the witch time by doing the perfect block. All Smash Brothers hated it. If the window for this was just a, ha- a one of my thinned hairs wider, I think that would have been better. <laughs> B- better, but here, like the rest of the game, I felt like I had Cheshire, her signature demon, doing most of the work. Yeah, but even more than Bayonetta because she's even weaker. And I like the Cheshire cat like idea and whatever as like a demon. But tell me if this happened to you because this drove me insane. There was a part where you have to ride Cheshire Cat in the desert because Viola, like, you know, she's she's what dehydrated or something. So you have to carry her on her back. So you're running through there's Cheshire Cat trying to get her somewhere. And I had no idea what I was supposed to do. I ran around that thing for like 20 minutes and well, until get- I got tired and went to bed. Then I tried again the next day. I was still stuck and I finally relented and I had to look it up. I had to look up something in Bayonetta 3, man. Like, I di- that sucks. I didn't need to look it up, but it did take me some time. I, I, there was that weird, that, that almost sexual thing where she, every few seconds she, keep, she kept going, need water. So, okay, <laughs> clearly, we're, clearly we're dying and we need to find water. Okay, so I need to wander around here and look for an oasis of some kind. I understand that. What I wasn't getting at all was I needed to use the cat's tail as some kind of divining rod to find things that were decidedly not water. Why did they why did they make it hot and cold in the desert? And why didn't they just why didn't they just telegraph that a little bit at all? How the hell was I supposed to know to do that? I had no clue. Uh I think they tried with the need water thing, but not good enough in a game. Not not good enough in a series where we're used to fight this thing, fight this thing, fight this thing. <laughs> just it, it it's just it's, there's so many decisions like that made out of three that are just baffling. It's just like, come on. Okay, I will say this: we've been shitting on this game a lot, but I'm going to say this: when the game works and runs well enough to not be distracting or bad, that old Bayonetta magic is like still definitely there. Bayonetta, Bayonetta three can still be Bayonetta, right? Like there's a, okay. I remember this cool boss battle on a platform surrounded by lava 
right? And the boss like punches like the platforms are kind of tilts this way and that way. So you kind of have to like not fall in the lava, right? While kicking and punching him in the face. That was fun. I like that one. Or like, um, I don't know. I actually like the fight with her mom and stuff like that too. Cause that, that was also like, I missed, the, I had missed those like one-on-one fights. You remember how many times you fight Jean and like the original Bayonetta? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I miss those. And you got that by fighting Mummy, right? Yeah. So I I like that too. I, look, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun times too. But I mean, when we're thrust from area to area, killing off worlds by accident, and you know, getting the demons that come with them, it's hard to you know feel attached to anything very well. I mean, I guess I get we have to fight Mom because we did this with Dad, but you know. Uh, yes, France did have French Enzo, and we have to. I have to hand it that. that, that I thought that was fun, and we French Enzo was and, amazing, even though he had like two lines. We, we have to save him and Le Policia from the homunculi, and they're all doing the thriller dance, and then the frog demon that you'd say you saved earlier it becomes a giant singing lady demon, and that feels like a homage to something because there's no way that exists in a vacuum. Uh, do, do you do you know what? Might they might have ripped off with that? Nope, not a clue, not a because single that, clue. Because because I I feel like there's no way you came up with this on your own. <laughs> there, there just wasn't. <laughs> no, look, I French Enzo's great. Uh, the frog. I like the look of a lot of demons. I don't like the train thing, as I said, but like horrible. <laughs> I man, I don't know. Just just a mess sometimes, but there's still really good stuff in that mess that you can't ignore. But one thing I also didn't care for in this game is the battle theme. Uh, Bayonetta's battle theme, Mysterious Destiny, may be the best one of its type like ever, like seriously ever. Bayonetta 2 has Tomorrow is Mine, which is also really, really great. Those two are like one and one A. So obviously Bayonetta 3 had had its work cut out for it. It does not get there like many other aspects of this game. I thought the battle theme of this game was just like whatever. I couldn't even hum it right now if if you made me. It's just I don't even do you remember even remember how it goes? I don't. Whereas I can remember Mysterious Destiny or Tomorrow's Mind like like that. No, it's it's kind of (laughs) hard. Though Viola's battle song is great. It's like a sort of 2000s pop punk uh, thing going on, right? I, I I like that one a lot, actually. I didn't really like playing as her, but I, I did like that song. Yeah, I have that song associated with getting my ass kicked a lot, though. So, you know, same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> you know, did you really have that hard of a time with Viola? Like, well, once I stopped, once I did decide to, you know, you know what? Cheshire's here. We'll just use him. Once I got into that mindset, <laughs> that's a, that's a solution to everything in this game. Just use the demon. <laughs> don't don't give me the tools I'm supposed to use. <laughs> no, uh, but you know what? I, something I need to address with the music because I, I this this was nagging at me for years because we had Fly Me to the Moon and Moon River covers in the first two games. And I'm and I'm sitting here like an idiot in 2018 or whatever, going, "What moon theme song are they going to pick to cover this time?" <laughs> <laughs> because because that's what I'm thinking about. Because I'm thinking Bayno three is going to be awesome. Why would I need to think about anything else? <laughs> Moonlight Sonata. Yeah, that that'd be something. But they landed on Moonlight Serenade, and I'm less familiar with that song IRL. But it did transition to a climax version, very nice, and it fits the theme of the story. They very poorly attempted to tell, but sure. as, we'll, as we'll get there. I mean, they're always thematically on point, right? It's just a matter of you know if you really want to listen to it. <laughs> um, I feel like all the best stuff in this game is like after you rescue the doctor. Because that's when you start getting like some very carefully curated battles. Like the boss battles are really fun. Like I said, the one on one stuff, especially with the doctor and like whoever else, that stuff was great. Or even, uh, I can't believe we went this far without saying it. Luca is a goddamn werewolf for some reason, for unexplained reasons. Luca is a fairy king werewolf. Oh, excuse me. 
Well, no, that's a different Luca. One's a fairy king, and the one we know is a werewolf for reasons. I, I that didn't make any sense to me. He also could have like not been there; it would have been fine. But I guess at the end, well, he, you need to have Bayonetta and Luca have a baby in some other dimension so Viola can happen, which is like the most like I don't know predictable thing in the world. But uh, I know you from somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't put my finger on it. Now we're going to spend 12 more chapters of the game telling me something I already know. Uh, I mean, then, you know, eventually it gets weird, but the the, the other Bayonetta's show up. <laughs> that was like, weird. Like, like, like hundreds of them. We, we met five, but they like pull out a whole lot of them. Like. It was like the wonderful 101, but Bayonetta's. Yeah, but the but you you do get the original Bayonetta and Bayonetta two Bayonetta as well. They're kind of the three. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! That was so wild, man. Do we want to? Oh my fucking god! Say say whatever you want. <laughs> when things get their most desperate. <laughs> Just out of nowhere, they lost all the other Bayonettas, but then Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2 pop out of the time (laughs) void hole things to save Bayonetta 3 sorry behind. And they even give you a short segment of playing as Bayonetta 1 with the old magic meter and the old control scheme and everything. And Mysterious Destiny. Like, how much more on the nose can you be that... In order to save this game, we needed to call upon Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2, literally. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll say this. Yeah, it's like, you could say it's like, not nostalgia baiting, because I don't think that's the right term for this. But you know what I mean? Like those kind of cute callbacks. It's like, oh, remember when I used to like Bayonetta instead of like this game I played? But like, <laughs> um, I liked it. It worked on me, especially, like I said. When I heard Mysterious Destiny, I was all in. Okay, fine. If we're going to do multi-universes. Multi-universes. And, and, and the worst part of that was Bayonetta 2 just shows up. She, we don't get a part where we play as her. Maybe you do if you play on like a higher difficulty level or something. But on Basic Bitch Normal, which I played on because I'm a basic bitch, <laughs> uh, you, you know, we just... Bayonetta 2 just shoots in the background. We only get, we only get a few seconds of Bayonetta 1. She's to, to, to she, play with. She's the best Bayonetta, right? Too, I think so. Aesthetically, yes. And I, I, it's and she, I gotta say, she's like the most fully realized version of the character, which is a weird thing to say. We're in where we're three games in, and the second one is th- the most fleshed out version. Yeah, because like the like the Bayonetta three, if you will, Bayonetta didn't really. I don't feel like we got to know her. Obviously, the first game, it's all about Bayonetta, her memory, which she, you know, stuff like that. Jean, you know, David Bowie, whatever her relationships to this material realm. I don't know anything about Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta. Like, who is that person? Like, and they they really assume you've played the first two games a lot. Now, we have, obviously, but and it seems like a weird complaint to have. But it's just it seems a little too reliant on that stuff. I mean, I brought this up earlier, but the plot is largely nonsense on the book in between the bookends, and they and even in the first two games, and this one does it too. They they pad it out with these books you can find along the way that, and you don't need to these giant walls of text. But I always thought that was annoying in a game like you get these Elder Scrolls length books where yeah, we're we're in the middle of this high octane action. Let's just stop the game and read. In the beginning, in our year, the year of our Lord, thirteen hundred, <laughs> the, the Umbran witches and their be- and their not BFFs, the Lumen Sage. Oh my fucking god! That's I, I, I like a lore dive sometimes, but this is hard. This is not the place. No, it, and it never was. Like, like, like it would have been. And I'm and I'm sure someone had the bright idea along the way for Bayonetta three to learn a lot about herself. And the Viola three, the the Viola three, the Viola reveal to be more (laughs) organic than it was. Not that it wasn't obvious from when Lucas saw her, but 
it's and as odd as it is to say in an established IP and with a development cycle this long, this part of the game seems to be rushed. Very. Like I said, I don't feel like I know Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta at all. The first two, I get it. Like, they're kind of different, especially since, you know, obviously there's been character growth through the whole first one. The Bayonetta 2, Bayonetta should be a kind of a feel like a different person, right? But in this one, it's just like, well, I don't know, man. She's she's as empty as the homunculi we fight. I mean, shit, I wasn't even going to be that harsh about it, but I'm I'm, I'm feeling it now. Wow. I mean, I mean, the, the whole thing ends with with the in the most predictable way too. You you you, uh, th- th- they win, but Bayonetta's packed gem thing broke, as we saw in the 2017 trailer, and that means you know the demons claim her soul, as per you know that they, they agreed, and you know, Luca's like, I'm coming with you. I'm like, oh, well, I, I okay. just don't get the whole Luca thing in this whole game. It just didn't make any sense. I am sure a lot. There was a lot more planned along the way there had to have been yeah he just kind of i mean whatever he, he appears as a werewolf a bunch of times and then the one time is a fairy but by the way i feel like rodan sort of gets the shaft here like he oh appears my. in a cool little outfit at the beginning because he, he's doing a hot dog truck or something right th- like that no, right it, it I, as a new yorker i need to step in and say he is driving a fucking pizza truck and <laughs> okay and, and and the reason I'm going to say this now is because there is we buy a lot of food off of trucks, hot dogs, gyros, and we got a nice bigger food truck culture than we've ever had before with the advent of the gourmet food trucks. But <laughs> you, there is no New Yorker that's going to buy pizza off this thing. This is clearly a cover for the weapons operation. If he's if he's if he sells even one pizza off that thing, he is a he is a fucking sham. You're telling me there's no such thing as truck pizza? Not in New York, there isn't. Come on, there's got to be there's got to be a truck that sells pizza. I mean, it, you can go to like county fairs of the, and you'll find like trucks that are owned by other pizzerias selling their thing. But you're not going to go to a you're not going to go to New York City where the opening of the game took place and find pizza. You will find a pizza place on every block. You are not going to find a pizza truck anywhere. If if you say so, it just seems inconceivable that that wouldn't be the case. But OK, let's talk about this, because after I beat Bayonetta 3, I had to remind myself whether I was putting on rose tinted glasses or just remembering the first game wrong, because I've always said the original Bayonetta is my favorite action game ever. But I hadn't played it in some time. So after playing three, I wanted to go back and remind myself, okay, am I really, you know what I mean? I had to go back and remind myself. So I played like, I don't know, three chapters of it, skip the cutscenes. I've seen a million times. It's pretty ugly now, that original game, but it the fighting is so superior. Steve, like the combos are like everything is so purposeful. Like the enemies have tells that are very easy to see. Unlike this game where it's just like, what, did you, I mean, do you agree? Because like they sort of, it's not just the wind up. They have like sort of a flash too. It's like the visual information in the first game is just so much better. And like, I just feel like I'm guessing in three, like, and you can pick up the enemy's weapons in the original and use them against them. Those like those angel swords or whatever the hell they are. The camera is like it gives you the right view of the action at all times so well you would think like there's a person inside there actually just like directing the action. It's so smart, this camera. I don't know what happened in Bayonetta 3. Like it it's it's so frictionless and exhilarating and still my favorite game of its kind. It it holds up. I didn't play the whole thing again, but I had to go back and remind myself like and I insisted that you play it, too, because I, I just I wanted you to you know what I mean? Of course, you played the original Bayonetta as well, but I for the purposes of this discussion, I, you know, you you I needed you to understand here. Yes, I went back and replayed the first few chapters and I need to emphasize that i was a bit late to this party when i first played bayonetta one it was at a friend's house and he had it set on the very easy mode where you didn't really do anything and it was mostly like and and after a few seconds i was like okay i get it she's naked under the hair i i i get it i don't know oh my god what a 
Oh my lord. There was not a strong introduction to the game. I, I wouldn't really play it until the Wii U version in 2014 since they came in a double pack, much like how we got it again on Switch, which is what I retried. And you're right, it's very stuck in 2010. I forgot how 2010 the art direction was. You're going to a holy city in, in this game and it's still white and gray and muddy somehow. The bloom, the bloom, I couldn't get over. It's so bloomed. <laughs> But 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 the the important part, the gameplay, yes, it's all much snappier. And I'm not the best at these games. I'm not I'm not the combo master in the slightest. But you know, it's I, I think it's not a total exaggeration to say that when which time activated, it was on purpose most of the time, and not just because I rolled in the middle of a onslaught of attacks, and technically one of those would have hit me, so that's why it went off. Yep. Yeah, everything feels so, again, feels so purposeful in this game, including which time, so you have a tighter window for it. Otherwise, you'll just do a regular dodge, whereas, like, again, you could just guess in Bayonetta 3. But, like, another thing that stuck out to me about the original is that, like, they actually teach you how to play the game with, like, tutorials, like, both, like, gameplay and then, like, strict, like, press this button tutorials which look i'm for less tutorials in games in general like maybe the original game was bit heavy-handed but beta to three doesn't tell you anything about anything including how to do witch time they don't even tell you that you would have to play a previous game to know that you can do that I guess they figured that you probably bought Bayonetta on any other console for like two bucks. And like everyone knows how to play now. <laughs> yeah, I, if this were my first Bayonetta game, which for a lot of people would be because, you know, like I would be so confused and pissed at this. Honestly, no, no this this wasn't the way to go. No. All right. Is, is Bayonetta dead like in, in the game? Is this it? Is this the last Bayonetta game? regardless of platinum status, which you'll get to in a second, like, oh, she's Bay- dead, right? Bay- Bayonetta 3 died. They did the fake credits thing. Be- you know, they do the, f- they, well, they do the pretend credits and then they do the real one with the Frank, Frank Sinatra cover and then the f- fake credits, why they felt the need to do it here and not, you know, before the credits at all. They, they have uh, the lot to do the, uh, do one more fight against a gas monster, th- th- homunculus thing. This is, uh, 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 I'm like, okay, we, we, I guess we're doing this. Okay. But then it turned out to be B- Bayonetta dragged to hell at the last second. Then they passed the name on and it felt like they might, this might've been their way of opting for a new direction in Bayonetta four. In that way, if they felt brave, what's her last name? Is her last name Bayonetta? Ceresa Bayonetta. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those things where they have to earn it. Yeah. Bayonetta, Bayonetta. Violetta Bayonetta. Um, is this just a classic case of like sequelitis? Maybe we've talked about the issues with the game and they're real, but do you think also this could just be diminishing returns, even though, you know, there's only been three Bayonetta games in, what, 12 years? It's not like they've been wearing it out. No, but nothing can ever really be fresh forever that you that you know without changing it too much. But at the same time, yeah, Platinum fucked this up. Yeah, because, like, I feel the same way. Because Bayonetta 2 was a fantastic sequel. It carved out its own identity by not standing in the shadow of the first game. It did its own thing, its own way. And while being, while still being Bayonetta, obviously, and I appreciate it for that. Bayonetta 3 also tries to do its own thing, but this is just, it sucks. It almost makes me think this is it for Platinum Games, like with the way things have been going there. Like I said, with the Babylon's Fall thing, with this game being whatever, I and the comments from the CEO about like, you know, with their future direction, uh, we can't just do these single play, you know, single player games, short term games. They want long term games. This might be the last time we get something like this from them. Unless they decide to revive scale bound for some reason. I just don't, I don't know what's going to happen with platinum from here on out. I, I know we've grazed on this in our main show a few times, but I, I gotta dive on this too. It doesn't. I don't think this looks good. 
it's not we're definitely not looking at the platinum from a decade ago we're not looking at the platinum from five years ago and it's not a secret that a lot of these games aren't working out at the time i last looked bayonetta sold over forty one thousand copies that, oh that was that, that that's not bad for a game for i think that's more than the other two did when they were new but that's not the kind of sales numbers that they need at platinum right now no and it's not the sales numbers that bayonetta will probably ever get honestly i think any sales numbers would be used in trying to make a plan a company like platinum look good to potential buyers at this point <sighs> it sucks to say something like that but man i, I don't of course, well, this will go up, and Nintendo already wrote the check. But you know, <laughs> well, who's the buyer? I was going to say Squeenix. I mean, I, I I figured with everything Nintendo threw at them already, that they'd be a obvious choice. And they can do whatever they want, and they did have a working relationship with Star Fox Zero. No matter how that turned out, that is that is important. I don't, man. I don't I, look. I, I I just don't like their odds of being platinum games, as is at this pace neither do i but i guess we'll see bayonetta 3 mostly a miss there is some good stuff about it but you know not (laughs) not not the lick this this game uh what was that thing they used to write on papers for me in school not your best work (laughs) platinum (laughs) c letter letter grade d c minus or yeah, that would be like when I would get a C. Not not your best work, Platinum. I would give this like a D. This gets a D. D plus. You know, I, I, I'm i grading on a curve, obviously, because it's Platinum. For them, this is a D plus. Man, it's, it's hard. I, I, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. So I gotta, I, I'd have to put it down the middle-ish. But. I definitely don't hate this game. I mean, for sure. It's just very disappointing in many aspects. But it was a long road to get to this. Yeah. Like, this like if long. this came if, if this came out in like 2019 and we got here, I'd be like, eh, I guess sort of maybe. But Yeah, I would have been a lot more forgiving of it, but we had to wait this long for this. Get out of here. Like, come on, man. Uh, anyway, I think that's enough uh, bitching about Bayonetta 3 for now. I think you know where to find us on Twitter, guys, at Fine Time Podcast. You can look in the description on Twitter to find our names on social media or look in the description of this podcast to find the same. See you next time, guys. Bye. Calzones. Calzones.